15 a.m. From the 105th floor where he said there was two to 300 people just on that floor waiting for them to be told to head down. He said, don't, don't panic to my mom. He said, don't get upset. Tell my kids I'm going to be okay, not to worry about it. I'm in God's hands. Sadie called uh, at about nine, uh, five minutes after nine. She said, oh God, please save me. She said she's trapped on the 106 floor. She was screaming that she can't get out. She's trapped, she can't get out. So she was yelling. She said, now, I don't know what to do. I'm coughing. The heat is coming. Please, I'm coming. I need water, I need water. And the phone dropped. We have checked the whole list in the armory over there. She's not on the dead list. She's not on the list on the hospital. So we are hoping for the best. She was on the 93rd floor of the second trade center. Um, we talked to her last after the first crash, and she called everyone to tell everybody that she was okay. And uh, so we um, we haven't heard anything since then, but uh, we know she's there. So we're just you know getting her face out there so everyone can find her. And we've covered all the hospitals and have on the missing persons, and everyone's here to support us, so it's great. So we just have to find her. We know we will. Tell us what happened over there, and if anybody got out, and if anyone made it, please call us. We're looking for her. I'm looking for my son, Sal. He left home that morning, and he hasn't called back since then. We're desperate. Everyone's desperate for information. Our website, CNN.com is launching an effort to help locate people who are missing in New York City. If you have a picture of a missing friend or relative, go to our website and follow the instructions there to send us the picture along with a contact number. For those of you just joining us here, the latest development in the aftermath of the attacks. At least eight people have been arrested at New York's Kennedy and LaGuardia airports as part of a security clampdown. Authorities say four of those taken into custody were seen at one of the airports on Tuesday the same day as the attacks. Those detained are being held for carrying fake documentation and immigration issues. Authorities say one man was carrying a forged pilot's license. A nighttime thunderstorm in New York has added to the difficulties facing emergency crews searching the ruins of the World Trade Center. Authorities estimate more than 4,700 people are missing. Relatives have been queuing to register details of loved ones at a makeshift morgue. President Bush will visit the scene Friday to comfort relatives and thank rescue workers. And in another development, the White House and Congress have agreed on a $40 billion emergency aid package for New York and Virginia, where the Pentagon is located. Officials say up to 50,000 National Reserve troops could be called up to assist with the response to the attacks. Meanwhile, U.S. Defense Secretary Donald Rumsfeld told CNN's Larry King live on Thursday that sustaining America's way of life in the wake of the attacks will require, quote, a war, a major, long-range, broad-based, sustained effort. And for more now on how the Pentagon is responding, we're joined live by CNN's Mark Potter at the Defense Department. Mark. Hello, Relitza. Well, Pentagon officials say a decision has not been made yet, uh, but President Bush is considering activating as many as 50,000 military reservists. Uh, we're told that they would be made available for the disaster uh, recovery efforts. Uh, they would also be there to assist uh, National Guard pilots who have already been put on standby or who have been flying combat air patrols. Uh, a Pentagon official cautions that this should not be seen uh, by uh, American citizens as a sign uh, that, the, uh, that a U.S. military response to the terrorist attacks is imminent. At a news briefing today, the Deputy Secretary of Defense said that when the U.S. does respond, uh, it will be widespread and long-term. I think one thing is clear is that you don't do it with just a single military strike, no matter how dramatic. You don't do it with just military forces alone. You do it with the full resources of the U.S. government. It will be a campaign, not a single action. And we're going to keep after these people and the people who support them until this stops. Now, here in Washington, D.C. today, uh, fighter jets uh, could be seen 
flying past the U.S. Capitol and other national landmarks. Uh, the Defense Secretary, Donald Rumsfeld, said that combat air patrols are still being flown in the area between uh, New York City and Washington, D.C. He also said uh, fighter pilots are on a 15-minute strike alert at 26 bases around the country. Now, here at the Pentagon itself, uh, this morning, workers continue to dig through the rubble as they have been doing 24 hours a day, looking for more victims and for the voice and data recorders, the so-called black boxes uh, from the American Airlines 757 jet uh, that slammed into the building here Tuesday morning. You can see uh, the site. There was a fire here uh, earlier, uh, but uh, it was put out in about 25 minutes uh, by firefighters and no one was hurt and now uh, work in the uh, rubble has resumed. The, uh, the county fire chief said earlier that uh, officials heard uh, what they believe were pinging sounds uh, emitted by one of the uh, uh, black boxes, uh, but so far there have been no reports that uh, any of the uh, boxes has been found. And finally, in conjunction with the National uh, Day of Prayer and uh, um, uh, Remembrance, a call by President Bush, there will also be prayer services here at the Pentagon uh, where officials say their best estimate now is that around 190 people were killed uh, here on Tuesday, and that includes uh, the people who were aboard that American Airlines jet. Back to you. Mark, if the Pentagon says that a military response is not imminent, what is the emphasis on at this point? Is it intelligence? Yeah, it, it, it seems to be on intelligence, uh, getting it right, knowing who to, atta to, who to attack, uh, laying the groundwork for that, and then uh, planning the attack itself. Uh, we are told this is going to be a broad-based, uh, multifaceted, long-term effort, uh, not just one single attack like we have seen in the past, and again, no signs now that it is uh, something that's going to happen right away. Back to you. Mark, thank you. John. If and when the U.S. does launch a retaliatory strike, military analysts say it's likely that Turkey would play a key role in the operation. Jane Araf talked with Turkey's prime minister about support for the United States. This is one of the biggest U.S. air bases in the region. On Turkish territory, leased by the U.S., it is, Turkish military sources here say, gearing up for a possible military strike. They say in the past two days, the U.S. has sent in more personnel, adding to the 7,000 troops it already has in southeastern Turkey. Movements in the town surrounding the base have been restricted. U.S. military officials won't comment on the new measures. Since the end of the Gulf War, U.S. planes have taken off from Injerlik to patrol and sometimes bomb northern Iraq, though the economy of southeastern Turkey relies on trade from Iraq. Also neighbor to Iran and Syria, Muslim Turkey is making clear its loyalties lie with the U.S. I don't specify any country uh, in uh, our struggle against uh, terrorism, and we will certainly support fully the Article 5 of NATO. That article, invoked by NATO for the first time, treats the attack on the United States as an attack on all NATO members. Uh, Turkey's prime minister uh, says uh, that means Turkey would allow Injerlik to be used to strike whoever was Iraq behind the U.S. attack. The there was military and emotional support here as throughout Ankara huh? Thursday, the Turkish star and crescent, the symbol of Islam, flew at half-staff alongside the Stars and Stripes in mourning for the dead. But in this country, a NATO member and a Muslim ally of the United States, the shockwaves are still being felt. Turkey's economy also staggered under the tragedy. Already in crisis, the Turkish lira fell further. Uh, we have realized that we will be faced with additional economic problems while trying uh, to deal with the economic uh, crisis. Uh, we know that it's a global problem also. Tourism was hit as cruise ships stopping in Istanbul kept their passengers on board. Like Americans around the globe, those here were told by their embassy to keep a low profile. Jane Araf, CNN, Ankara. We now return to New York City for the latest on the recovery efforts and the search for survivors. Gary Cutley joins us with an update. Well, Thank you, Relitza. As we've been reporting, uh, we wish we had something more or better to uh, report. Uh, 
Thursday, uh, no survivors were found or pulled from the rubble in there in lower Manhattan. The work was continuing. A severe thunder shower has caused some interruptions, but uh, it will keep going, of course, uh, 24 hours a day. The workers working in two 12-hour shifts. And as that happens, uh, we await this return to normal life, uh, much advertised, uh, much awaited, which in a way did begin today. But what we really see now is that Manhattan, at least, the center of New York, is divided into two parts, that and the lower end uh, where the disaster occurred and above that in Central Park, uh, Central Park area, east side, west side, even up to Harlem, there's nothing physical that you can actually see that, that relates to the disaster. Uh, people are back in museums, they're in stores, they're strolling along the sidewalks, they're in Central Park and yet the one telling difference is what you see and you sense in people's faces, in their eyes, in their body language, in snatches of conversation you overhear. That's an observation everybody is making and everybody is feeling, including our Maria Hinojosa. What could be more normal than a mother and a son and a baseball in Central Park? But another mom with her baby looks listless, sad, and the great Central Park lawn, empty. There are rollerbladers, but New Yorkers know that on a beautiful day, the park would actually be packed. Now, just a trickle. In Midtown, the traffic is back and running, and there are crowds in the streets. But these people were evacuated. There was a bomb threat on 42nd Street, and for precaution reasons, they've asked us to leave. There is foot traffic, lots of it, and people soaking in the good weather. But on the same street, tears. We've been to all of the hospitals. We'll go back. Yes, there is a sense that things are up and running in Midtown Manhattan, but everyone knows it's just not the same. Prime military right here. I'm waiting for the call, baby. It's unsettling to almost everyone. The environment up here seems uh, untouched by what happened. You know, there's a lot of tourists and people are still shopping and, and you see people laughing and having fun and it's kind of upsetting to me. Yes, people are shopping again, but the big seller, photos of the towers. New York will not be the same without those towers. They will not be the same. Now the school buses are up and running, but so are the teens evacuated from a high school. New Yorkers are used to graffiti, but now they stop to read or write as others casually stroll by with face masks because of the lingering smoke. At the Plaza Hotel, a row of flags from around the world are now all U.S. flags, the red, white, and blue up and down Fifth Avenue. The tourists can get into the Metropolitan Museum now or see a show. They've got tickets, but also misgivings. It's very difficult to go to a comedy when the nation is in grieving, but at the same time, our president and everyone else says to go about life as normally as we can. As normally as we can? These days in New York or all around the country, it's hard to know just what normal is anymore. Maria Hinojosa, CNN, New York. Maria was showing us those American flags uh, up and down Fifth Avenue. Of course, that's been happening across the nation. There's been a run, a tremendous surge in demand for flags, just as there's been a tremendous surge for human blood. And, of course, one of the things we've noticed these uh, past couple of days is how the blood has been given in greater quantities than ever, and those flags have been displayed in greater quantities than ever. Relitza, back to you. Garrick, this has been a day of, of false hopes dashed. We, we, we started the day with this good news that five firefighters had been rescued. It turned out uh, not to be the case. Uh, describe to us the, the emotions of this day. Well, the emotions are mixed, as we saw in Maria Hinojosa's report right there. We're trying to get back to a normal rhythm of life, but you simply can't do it. There was that one couple, for example, she interviewed on the sidewalk. They were going to go to a comedy. Now, um, Broadway has lots of comedies, lots of tragedies, too, a plane as, 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 as theater plays. And um, you probably ordered those tickets a long time ago. You've been looking forward to this great occasion. Tonight's the night. It's there. Um, what do you do? Not go? No, you go. How do you laugh? Can you laugh? Um, I don't know how I would react at a comedy, even if I were able to get tickets to the producers, which has sold out for the next uh, two years and is, a, is one of the great comedies of all time on Broadway. So I think people sitting in the theaters, uh, who were sitting in the theaters on Thursday night and will be there on Friday night too, um, had very mixed emotions. And that's the drama, indeed, that's the theater of life we're going through right now in New York. Relitza? Garrick, thank you. The disaster at the World Trade Center raises questions about the structural integrity of skyscrapers. 
David George explores that technology.